Good afternoon, Mr. Chabalal. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Yes. yes. Unfortunately, Mr. Mr. Mioli is already here, and he has been here for quite some time. We had told you we started at 1 o'clock. We are now starting at 2. So you really have only five minutes. I am aware of your request that you wanted to have 10 more minutes. Unfortunately, we can't accommodate that. So squeeze yourself in the next five minutes and state the things that you would like to say to us. Thank you for um, the time um, available to me, uh, Mr. Chair. Firstly, I want to apologize for the technological glitch um, that happened earlier. Um, I will start off um, right where I left off, um, which um, obviously I was, uh, I had just spoken about the hearing in Bloemfontein and, and what then followed. Um, after that matter in Bloemfontein where I had lost my contract after being um, notified by my agent um, during the month of March where all the franchises had concluded their squads. Um, I then obviously reached out to the then standing in CEO, Mr. Jack Ford, as I believed that um, as one of the best um, young uh, prospects in the country um, with performances that um, have justified my position, within the SAA structures over the last four or five years, being a regular member in that team, that SAA, uh, I mean, Cricket South Africa and the CEO would then obviously um, handle the situation um, and move me elsewhere so that I can continue with my career. Um, this was obviously clearly not the case. Um, and I could not understand how... Um, um, a bright prospect at the time, at the age of 24, 25, getting into terms with my cricket, starting to understand the art of spin bowling, how I was left in the dark. And Cricket South Africa, as a governing body, took no responsibility to make sure that my career was not cut short um, in the manner that it was. I lost everything. I went from being a bright future prospect, representing my country, to playing regularly for the South African team, to struggling to put foot on the plate. Between 2010 and 2013, not only did I lose my contract, but all the income from guaranteed future SAA tours as I, was a, as, as I was a regular member in this team, in all formats and all the sucker payments that followed. I suffered not only financially, but emotionally, socially, and morally as well. And CSA needs to take responsibility for this. This was a violation of my ethical and human rights. My dignity was infringed upon. My life took a different turn for the worst and I hated everything that, previ that previously meant everything to me. I left Bloemfontein and began a new chapter elsewhere. Our former statesman, Nelson Mandela, famously said that sports should be the use, should be the, the tool that, that is used to unify the nation. But instead, in my subjective experiences, the game of cricket has been used to, to, to divide along racial lines. In conclusion, I therefore wished a day to see the Proteus team winning a World Cup with a truly unified and a cohesive team that represent a unified South African, unified South Africa, and not a team that upholds false public facade of unity to the detriment of black players.
And in conclusion to my statements to this commission on what I believe should be the way forward for Cricket South Africa in order for this not to happen again. Cricket South Africa needs to evaluate its value system, first and foremost. Secondly, Cricket South Africa needs to appoint people, black and white, people that are prepared to sacrifice with anything and everything, including their lives, so that freedom, justice for all, and shared prosperity, national unity and reconciliation can become a practical reality. Thirdly, how does CSA choose its leaders? Who qualifies to be a leader? What does history tell us about them? And I want to make an, a, an example here. We have a captain that all these injustices have had happened under his watchful eye. Fast forward 10, 15 years. We appoint the same person to be the director of cricket. How can the same rotten apple that all these instances have happened under his leadership, how can we trust him moving forward? And this is justified by the appointment at his arrival um, of the head coach, the spin bowling consultant, which were the very same instigators um, that have led to us arriving at this point as a nation. Do these people have the capacity and the, and the integrity to be in meaningful leadership roles? We have to ask. CSA needs a stringent process across all levels before anyone can arrive at a, leader, at a leadership position. Lastly, in closing, we live in a society that lacks discipline and consequences to one's actions. If we can't hold people accountable for their actions, discipline will never be implemented. And without discipline, we will never truly realize a unified, thriving South Africa through its value system. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mr. Chabala. I, I hope that those to whom you send the message are listening and that they will take the opportunity to come and balance what you say and explain their conduct in a manner that will exercise our minds in evaluating what has been put before us by all people, those against whom allegations are made by people who have sworn that what they are saying is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing else but the truth. And of course, they who may have to explain contextually or otherwise why the things that we have been hearing happened, happened. Because, as I said to, to everyone who appeared before you, we live in a country where the past informs the present and should shape the future. We can't do anything about the past except to have those memories that we bring to these proceedings. We can do something about the present so that the future which we hope we are going to leave our children to, to enjoy 
will be one which will take into account everyone's experience, including yours. So your having taken the time to come and testify to us in these proceedings is welcome and is appreciated. We don't take it for granted. It takes courage for anyone to come in public to state uh, their victimization or victimhood, or even merely to say, for the last I don't know how many years, I have not been earning an income, or I no longer see a bright a future, as bright a future as I thought I had. So those are the things we will be taking with us as we examine everyone whom we have invited to come here. And therefore, I have to thank you in particular for having taken the opportunity and having come. So thank you very much. I think the time is now has now come for us to excuse you, uh, and you are therefore excused. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thanks uh, for the opportunity, um, and uh, we can only wait and hope for a better South Africa for all um, to live in. Thank you. You're welcome. Advocate Mwale, who else are we having? We have, I have Yamuli, and he's here in person. Mm -hmm. So we just need, need to... Recording stopped. Yes. Postpone for over the head. Yeah, just for to set up. But I think I have set up this camera. Mm You. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Mr. Mjoli. Good afternoon, Chair. Yes. Now you must relax. Um, my advocate, Nile, is going to ask you if you are going to tell us the truth or lies. And so it is going to be a formal induction. In other words, she will swear you in. Uh, and then thereafter, uh, Mr. July will uh, will indicate the areas you should, you know, you would uh, you have covered in your statements or affidavit. But please relax. Uh, don't. This is an opportunity for you to say the things that you want to say to us since uh, 
this is a platform that was created for people like you. Don't rush yourself, pace yourself, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Advocate in life. Thank you, Chair. Afternoon, Aya. Afternoon, Advocate. Yes, are you going to take an oath or are you going to affirm? I'll take an oath. Mr. Aya Vuyamioli, do you swear that, you, that the evidence you're about to give today is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If that is so, please raise your right hand and say, so help me God. I swear, so help me God. Thank you. You've now been sworn in as a participant in the SJN hearings. Thank you, Mr. Mubiwani. Mr. July. Yes. Um, Mr. Mioli, how are you? Good to you. Okay. Mr. Mioli, you attested to an affidavit, right? Yes, sir. And that affidavit is in front of you and it has not been signed. And you have just taken oath, and the oath, the evidence that you are going to give, it incorporates what is stated in the affidavit that is before you. Yes. Yes, sir. So you, according to your affidavit, you are here to talk about racial treatment and discrimination that you, and in general, the black players, they receive at the end at the hands of white administrators, right? But you have a specific incident that you wanted to talk about. And this involves you being beaten up by a person in a match that a three day game between the KZM Coastal and Bonat. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And and you are not happy with the manner you reported the incident. You are not happy with the manner in which the incident was handled. And you were also put in a situation where you had to agree to a statement, a joint statement with the dolphins then. And you refused to make that statement. And somewhere in 2020, this happened in 2016, and in 2020, when the Black Lives Matter happened, you were then asked by the journalist about that incident. And you responded to the journalist. Yes, and that has caused problems for you. And um, you, you also talked to uh, Yes, maybe let me let me leave it to you. Then you give the details of the whole incident. Okay. Oh, greetings, greetings, everyone. So yeah, thank you very much for this opportunity and this whole uh, setup that we can speak uh, speak about how 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 we were treated. So um, my name is Aya Vuyamnyoli. Originally, I'm from Eastern Cape, from Episho. So I grew up, was born and bred that side. And, and then I went to high school. I started playing cricket in high school. I went to Dell College. So I played my cricket at Dell College. And then uh, I represented Border, Border under, under the Coca-Cola Kayamajola week. Then uh, I played there. Then I went to University of Forte. I studied at Forte and I played there. And I also represented South Africa universities for two years. And then I also represented uh, the Colts team at South Africa under 23. Then from Forte, I got an opportunity to, 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 to move to Kimberley, where I got a, a contract to go play at Greek Wars. Then at Greek Wars, I played there. I did well, and I moved to Pretoria. Pretoria, I played there. Then in 2015, I moved to Durban. I got an opportunity to go play in Durban. So when I went to go play in Durban, uh, um, I worked hard, I played, and, and I got an opportunity to represent the franchise team there, the Dolphins in the Ramslam in 20, 2015. As I represented Dolphins, and then uh, the, the, the conference ended with the T20s, and then we got into the one-day conference, where coach was Lance Cruz at that time, and he said that some of us must go uh, get some game time with the B team, in the B team. 
So we played against Boland and Bolin Powell. So we went there, the captain was Robbie Freiling. So he was captain of the team. So we went to Powell, we got to Powell, and we played a, a three day, the first day was, was a three day game. And then on the three day game there, the, it started, I remember before the game, so we get these other, other shirts that we get from, uh, from CSA for the three day conference, we the, the ones that are not cut. So I had a scissor with me and I wanted someone to cut it for me. And, uh, and Robbie offered to cut the, the shirt and he cut it in a way that was, it looked very horrible on me. But then I let that slide. And then after that, we went into play. So when we went into play, he, he opened, I think he opened the bowling and, uh, and uh, someone else opened the bowling. So he bowled himself, uh, Paul, the people that know cricket, Paul is like a flat wicket. So we kind of struggled a bit. And then he bowled sim, he bowled uh, is like a sim bowler. And then he changed in the middle of the game and I have, him, I have him bowled and he started bowling spin. And me and my role is also a fast bowler and the ball was new. So I kind of seen all this, all, all, all that was doing. And other players also complaining, why is he bowling spin bowling now after he just bowled spin with guys that are new ball bowlers that can also bowl. So then I let that slide also. And then we kind of lost the game in the space of two days, three day game. And then he went to the, in the changing room, we were all sitting there, he was a captain, he's speaking about the loss and stuff like that. And he was swearing, he was talking to everyone badly and stuff like that. And, and I remember the time, it was a time where those, uh, uh, the guys that played for South Africa, they wrote a letter to Cricket South Africa, Bibs must follow, something like that. And he mentioned stuff that, the only thing that I know about you guys is, to, is just writing letters and that's what you guys do, you don't, and he was very, and he was very even, even talking about quotas and stuff like that. When was this? That was uh, in the changing room. So what year was this? 2016, 2016. I think around uh, Jan, Jan of mm. So he kind of spoke then, I kind of, then we, we, we had a fines meeting and we went back to the hotel. So we were chilling at the fines meeting and I raised my hand. I told him, Robbie, the way you spoke there, I don't like it. And the, the, and the way you speak about all these sensitive issues, you speak so freely of it, and it's a lot of, there's a lot going on. And he kept quiet, he didn't say much. And then the day moved on, and then, and then the day moved on, and then we were flying the next day to, uh, to, we were flying the next day, but our flight was late, so we went to the waterfront to chill, we at the restaurant, we were chilling there. And then when we were chilling there, we were all chilling as a team. Some other guys were at the mall, some other guys were at the restaurant. So we were chilling, having conversations and stuff like that. And he came up back again. I remember there's some players that came, black players that came, who listened. And then was talking about quotas, was talking about all these, these issues. And then I kind of... Was, what was he talking? He was what talking... Was he, about he was mentioning players that don't deserve to play for the Dolphins. I remember he mentioned like a, a Sbonello Macanya or Andy Lepasuguayo is not doesn't deserve to be playing and stuff like that, to play because of quota and all the things. So at the stage now, we had to go back, go to the airport. So I, we started like arguing together. And then I remember I told him in the, in the bus, I was like, the way you treated me in this game, one day my child will do the same thing to your child and he won't like it. So he got angry and he punched me in, in my face. And then I think there were guys that uh, there was guys on, on, on in the bus that that held me, and started to tell me to stop. And they said, "Aya, we saw what happened. Mm. We are on your side. We will report this." And because I was oh, I was very angry, and then I, I kept on talking. I kept on talking. As we got to the airport, I remember I opened the door. I went around to his side. He was sitting on the passenger's side in the front. And then there were cops coming, and then. And then they stopped the whole thing, and then we went in to, to, to check in. So as we checked in, I checked in normally, and, and, and then I, I remember the guys took me to, 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 to Mag and Bean, to, we were about to wait to board. As we were waiting there, uh, as we were about to board now, so I went into board, and then the lady's like, no, you're not allowed to board, you were threatening someone. You were threatening someone. So the person doesn't feel comfortable to, to, to chill with, to be in the same flight as you. Mm. 
So I had to, I had to, I had to, I had to in Cape Town, I had to, I had to go back and go get my bags. I remember my bags were in the, in the rail. So I, they were the only ones that were circulating there. So I had to go get my bags, and then as I got my bags, luckily I found someone that I went to school with, at the airport. Then I told he t I told him what happened, and he said, "No, it's fine. You can go sleep at my house." So I went to go sleep at his house. I, I went to go sleep at his house, and then I called my brother. And then my brother, my brother, I told him what happened, and my brother wrote a letter to Cricket South Africa. Wrote a letter to to the CEO of Dolphins. And then the next day, the coach came and and they came to pick me up at the because I sent him like my location and he came to pick me up at a friend's place. So yeah, then we returned to Durban and the letters we said we, my, we the letters we wrote. And then. Uh, the, I think I got a, a response from uh, Max Jordan, who was the head of transformation at that time. He said that uh, I must first not go straight to Cricket South Africa, I must first deal with it, with the union, with, with Mr. Pitivet. So, yeah, and then uh, there was a hearing. I think the hearing was the next the week. Uh, oh, he was suspended first. He was suspended. And then we carried on playing. We had a one-day conference that was going on, so I was in, involved in that one-day conference. So then I was invited to to come to the fines, to come to the hearing. Mm. So I was, remember I was playing in uh, in Kimberley. So I had to, and the team was from Kimberley was going to go to play in Porch. So the team from Kimberley was going to Porch. So I had to, I had to from Kimberley. I had, they hired the car for me, and then I had to drive to Bloemfontein and Bloemfontein fly to Durban. And, f and go to and prepare for the hearing the next day, the next morning. So I called him the day before the hearing, or oh, the CEO of, of, of Dolphins, Pete Tivet. I asked him a bit, because uh, I had lawyers and everything organized. So he said to me, no, there's no need for you to bring a lawyer. The union has got this on their side. They, they are on your side. So, so I said, okay. I said, he said, there are no lawyers involved. I said, okay. So I remember that the next day in the morning, I went to Kingsmead Stadium. And the parking lot as I parked, I saw them also, uh, Robbie's car also parking. And I saw him, he was walking with the, he was there with the lawyer, with the bags and everything. So I was surprised. Because the CEO told me that there's, there's going to be no lawyers involved. Who was the CEO? It was uh, Pete Tivet. I think he left, mm. to, moved to New Zealand or somewhere. Mm. So uh, we, so I went to him, I said, Pete, you said there's no lawyers involved, and this guy, is, he came here with his lawyer, so what is happening? And then he said to me, he said to me, no, don't worry, we're on your side. Mm -hmm. So it was me and the witnesses that were there, guys that were there to witness and said they saw him doing all of this and said what he said. So as we, we waited by the reception, and he went in with the CEO, and they they had the, they had they 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 did they they, they spoke there, so I, th I was waiting to be called. So Pete came out after like twenty to thirty minutes, and he said, "No, everything is re is resolved. You just have to uh, everything is resolved. Robbie is, is is guilty. He said he's guilty, and he's admitting to what he's done, and he wants to apologize to you." So I remember we went to this separate room. He said, it was me and Robbie. And I said, OK, what are you guilty of? I asked him a question. And he said, no. And he, still, he lied. Then I said, and they said, you're still lying. Why are you not sorry for what you've done? I said, you're not sorry for what you've done, because you're still lying. And then, and then, and then Pete said, no, everything is sorted. We're going to we find him. And we've done all of this and all of this. So I left. And I had to, like, after the hearing, I had to go to the airport and fly to Joburg for me to take a, a, a drive to Porchestrom. Mm -hmm. I remember, and I got to Joburg as we were driving, listening to radio. I don't remember who I was with. And then I hear on the radio that his band has been uplifted, that he's, he's, he's able to play. So I was also shocked. I was like, what punishment is this? This guy said it is given to him. And I remember even the players at the Dolphins camp in Porch, they were not happy. After I got there in the, in the hotel, the guys were like, what, what happened there? And I told them the story of the whole thing, how it went on. I never went into the hearing. I never, nothing really happened. Mm -hmm. 
And then, and then, and then mm. uh, we got back from Porch. Uh, Lance Klusner was the coach. He, he, we had a meeting as a team. And we had a meeting as a team. And then Lance said, was, the, the, the Lance said he called the team up together and then said, guys must raise their hand if they felt like Rob, we're not ready to accept Robbie into our setup because he felt he has done a wrong thing. And I remember guys put on their hands, and then most guys are put in their hands. Most guys are put in their hands where they're saying that we're not ready to welcome him into 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 the into the into the, into the setup. And then a week after or something like that, uh, uh, Lance Klusner was fired as a coach. Mm. He was fired as a coach, and and then and then and then because uh, he's the one who called me at the Dolphins. I was very comfortable with him. He's a person that I used to relate to a lot. So he. And then, and then the whole thing just it it stopped, so I had to train and play and and just keep quiet also, and it was my first season at the Dolphins that time as a professional cricketer in that setup. So I stayed there. I played. I played. I played. And I, I remember I got a, a message from Chokotri Toyana, who told me that uh, you can come to Joburg and and come play at at, at the Lions where I felt comfortable. Then I was not comfortable with the whole setup. Then I moved to Joburg, the end, that, that, end, that end of the season. Mm. Mm. Yes, before you moved to Joburg, there was an issue about you and Dolphins making a joint statement. Oh, that that happened uh, uh, when I, also what happened now? Uh, so the whole thing, it kind of <coughs> shifted. Oh, also I had a, I opened the case. I opened the case yes, yes. at the police the SAPS. Mm. So I opened the case at the SAPS, and then uh, and then after the hearing, I said I don't agree with all of this. I'm gonna keep my case on because I don't think this thing was dealt with in the right way. And then we we sent we sent him an, an emails to to, to 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 the CEO of the Dolphins. We sent emails to to Cricket South Africa of saying the matter was handled. Was, the hearing was handled in a, in, a, in a wrong manner. And then I didn't get we didn't get response on that. So I only had that case the court case that I had on my side against him at the at the SAPS. So they. Months, uh, weeks, and months. I think my month or something like that passed, and then he came to me. He called me that he would like to speak to me. We met outside the stadium, and he spoke to me. And when he was speaking to me, he was more like apologetic. He was telling me what's going on in his life, all these decisions that he's made. Then I said, "Okay, now you're kind of speaking." So then I went on to go drop the charges, because he was. I could see he was apologetic, and he mm -hmm. was. So I went on to drop the charges and I told him that he should never do this thing again to any other person. So after that, uh, then it comes to come to 2020, the whole Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. movement issue. So one of the journalists contacted me and said, okay, Aya, we know you, you, you're treated in the wrong way and the, your, your hearings are not done the right way. And uh, we... He, and then he said, what was the story? Then I told him my story again, because it's my story. Mm. So I told him my story again, this is what happened. So, and then I got calls, I got messages, and then I got, I got people telling me that I'm lying from the dolphin set up. Then there was articles that, that said that I'm lying, what I'm saying is not true. To me, that, 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 that kind of, I, I felt like this, these people are not apologetic what, 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 what they did to me. So I can't, and, 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 and they said I'm lying. They said a lot of things, that this thing was dealt with in the right way. Then I sent an email to the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the CEO of the Dolphins and saying, how, how was it handled that right way? If, 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 if the, the hearing, there was no one, there was no one who was, who, who, who was, who, who was writing, they would say that the hearings happened at a certain way. There was no recordings of it. There was no things written on it, no signs. And there was only the CEO and, law, and Robbie's lawyer. And I didn't even participate in the hearing. So, so that happened. And then they wrote all these articles. And then the players also wrote articles. So the whole thing woke up again. And 
that the players that also came in and said, no, Aya, whatever Aya was saying was true. So I also went to Saka. So I also sent a message to Saka in 2016. And then Saka never responded to me. What were you saying in the message to so Saka? I, I told them about the, the, the unfair treatment, and then they said the CEO was going to deal with it. And after the whole thing, they never got back to me and asked, okay, how was this thing treated? Mm. And then, and then, and then uh, nothing happened on, 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 on my side. So, so, they, so then uh, they, they, they replied in 2020 mm. when the whole thing was going on, and they apologized on the end. They, they apologized that they sorry of how the, the how they, they apologized not getting back to me after the whole process that was that taken that, that taken place. So you, the article that you are referring to is one which is marked an extra AM two in front of you, and the CEO at this time is a certain Hendrik Stradom. Hendrik Stradom. Yes. yes. Then he says, on the second page, he says a lot of things, but I'm interested in the part where he says, the incident was addressed head on. And in the end, both players considered their wrongdoing, shook hands, and walked away to share the change room for the remainder of the season. It saddens us, particularly to have the story published on Mandela Day, where the focus is on reconciliation and nation building. What he says there is complete opposite of what you have mm. just told us. Mm. Yes, they... Did I... he speak to you? Yes, I said, uh, there's emails that I, I put into, uh, there's some emails in uh, that I sent that I told him about, because he was not CEO at that time, yes. he was a new CEO. Yes. So I kind of sent him an email and I told him what happened. I told him about the hearing, the hearings that happened. And uh, I told him about the hearing that happened. Mm. So I said there was a complete disregard by the case of the union of my personal welfare and how the incident might have affected me. I said there was a lack of transparency about how the union dealt with the matter. Mm. Given that I was directly involved in the, in the matter, I would have expected to be involved in the disciplinary proceedings, which was not the case. And then I said there was no code of conduct that clarified what the sanction for such an offense should be. To this day, I'm not convinced I know what the sanction was imposed on Robbie Freiling and whether such sanction was co consistent with the code of conduct of the union. Mm -hmm. And then I said, after, after the, the KZN union and the CEO seem to have completed disc discretion on how they dealt with the matter. To me, this demonstrates that there was no governance framework in existence of how such matters should be dealt with. There's a fra there's, there's clearly a lack of transparency I said, it was also concerned both Saka and CSA didn't show any interest, interest when I initially contacted them about the incident in 2016. Again, the only communication I received from them was on how the CEO of the union at the time, Pete Devert, would deal with the matter. Given the fact that I was not satisfied with how the union was dealing with this incident, I felt like I had no alternative to structure to turn to report my grievance. And my opinion is, 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 is that there was more interest in protecting the reputation of Robert Freiling and the KZN union rather than dealing with the situation in a fair and transparent manner. The union and the CEO at the time did everything to ensure that they, they swept the case under the carpet. At the end of the day, the incident was sparked by racism. The way that the union dealt with it didn't show that they take racism in the sport seriously. In fact, I feel that it probably emboldens those who, who perpetrate act of racism to them. To, to them, again, given the lack of consequences and slip on the wrist, and, and slap on the wrist, punishment imposed. Mm. Let's go back to the meeting that you had after the game. You have lost 
already for two days. Yes, sir. Now, then you have this meeting. Were you directly blamed for the loss? The loss no, no, no. Mm. I was not directly blamed. Mm. But then the, 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 the thing that I didn't feel comfortable with, I stood up for, he was speaking a lot about quotas. He was speaking a lot about... Mm. Mm these kind of things, which, which there were quite a few black guys over there that, but I stood up and said, the way you're speaking about these things, I, would, I don't feel comfortable. Mm. It's mm. a sensitive issue and you just speak freely of it. Mm. But if you look at AM3, which is the news, um, the third page there, AM3. Yeah. It starts by saying, I'll start where it says one, two, three, where it says teams. Can you see that? AM3. AM3. The third yes. page. The third page on, of AM3. On AM3, okay. Yes. It says teams, teams always have mm. these fines meeting after the game, which I detest. And the issue came up where, apparently, Aya didn't want to bowl into the wind during the course of the game, said Jaffa. Mm. There was a whole lot of finger pointing and there was tension brewing. Robbie, as captain, felt Aya did not want to play his part for the team. Aya said he was, given, well, was not given a fair chance. The tension on the field went into the fines committee mm. and so on. First, yeah, I, I, I read this part. Mm. Firstly, he mentioned that the, the punching of Robbie and stuff like that it happened <coughs> during fines. It happens the next day. Not even on fines. It happened the next day. Mm. 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 And the reason that <coughs> I didn't like it for, for me, for example, in cricket, if, if a, a bowler's got, if there's, you cannot bowl sim and then change and bowl speed <coughs> with the other sim bowlers. It's like, for example, maybe in soccer. Mm. So I'll be a goalie in a professional match and then I decide oh, I want to go be a striker now. Mm. It's the same thing. And then there are strikers in the team. That's, that's the only thing that I stood for. I said, I cannot, you cannot bowl spin where I'm there to bowl. Mm. I've, I've been sent to bowl. So well, that's the reason that I complained, mm. and and I, and I and I didn't like it. And any bowler would do that. Mm. You won't just want someone to bowl him and change to spin. Is it not this kind of discussion then that took place the previous day, that then resulted in you approaching? There was there were a lot of things that he said. It was not just that, mm. and, and 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 racial things that he said about quotas, about, there's a lot of things that he said, which I stood up for, and, and I said, you, you are wrong. The issue of quotas would have said yes. in this meeting, right? Yeah, he mentioned that after the game, after when, we, when, we, when, when, we, when we just lost the game. Mm. And then I took it to the fans, because I remembered, then I took it to the fans, I said, the way you speak about it, it is not right. It's like you guys were the cause for the loss, mm. and it was the quotas that made us to lose. It, it, it appeared so, mm. it appeared so. And those quotas, it's you, mm. the black people, who made us to lose. Can you still remember <coughs> the way in which you put that made you believe that he was referring to you as a black cricketer and that the inference that could be drawn from, from what you were saying was that the match was lost because uh, black cricketers who are known more than just uh, quotas in the sense in which that was used are appointed when they are not um, fit to be appointed. But I would like, because that's the impression I get from what your evidence is about relevant to this incident and the mentioning of the word quarter. But uh, have I got it right or do you recall a way in which he put it? 
So he, in he, such a way that it was offensive to you. Mm. Oh, so, Chair, I think he mentioned I uh, mentioned the story of that bibs must fall, that he said, the only thing that you guys know to do, and I remember that article that those bibs must fall were black guys writing that thing to Cricket South Africa, I think. Mm. So he said, the only thing that you know, you guys know what to do is to write letters. I remember that. Mm. And then he spoke about coaches, even at the, at, the water, at the waterfront, and there's players, I remember there's a player, the name of Danielson Nguba, he mm. said, I, he said that the moment he at the at the restaurant, he heard him speak all this stuff about quota system and stuff, and he left. Mm. But I kind of stayed there, and I, I was I, I was I was with other people. Mm. So so he he's, he was on that, on 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 on, the, on that story the whole time, which I, I took offense and I stood up for myself and I told him. Mm. I speak about the, the joint statement. So, so the joint statement, it happened in a, now in 2020 after all these articles were, were coming out with the whole Black Lives Matter. I was spoken to, to the CEO, um, Mr. 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 Heinrich. So he said, let's do a joint statement together to, to, to just level grounds and leave this whole thing and move forward. I said, okay, you can do a joint statement, but when, when, when he sent the, the joint statement on my side, the stuff that I was reading, I was like, this is not true. So, so I said, I'm not going to participate in any joint statement where, you, where, 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 where it's not the truth that's been spoken here. So I, 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 I declined myself on, 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 uh, on, 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 on putting a joint statement with, the, with, the, with, the, with, with, with Robbie or the Dolphins. And then I sent an I sent an email to to Mr. Chris Nanzani, and uh, I'm all, I think I assisted Mr. Chris Nanzani and, and 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 to the CEO in that in that in that email. And then Mr. Chris Nanzani wanted uh, the hearings, the hours of the hearing, and all all everything about the hearing, which the whole things died. It, nothing happened after that till now. So on AM4, going back to this issue as to this had racial undertones, which is what made you to fight with, I mean, for him to, it would seem that you were challenging him about his attitude towards black players. On AM4, second page, You are saying there where it says just on top, one, two, third paragraph. It was my first season of franchise cricket that year, but I could hear all sorts of snides comments from Robbie about black players and stuff constantly. Mm. So that's what you were addressing. Yes, when and I'm not the only one. Yeah, I've got people that also felt the same way that that were are they. So Lance Klusner, going back to Lance Klusner's thing. So Lance Klusner, you, how do you link his removal to the? meeting that you had as, as players and where he asked you guys that those who are not in support of Robbie coming back should raise their hands. How, how are they related, the, 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 mm. his departure? It just, that meeting? I, I'm, not, I'm not sure how related it was, but it happened at the same time, at the same, but, and, and I felt like uh, the coach that time last week I was on my side. Mm. He felt like this thing was not done, the, the hearings were not done the right way. Mm. And then the moment that he left, I felt vulnerable mm. and dead. In. Did you speak to him after that? I we spoke. Mm. We spoke, but it was, mm. it was to check up on him and stuff like that. Okay. 
There's just uh, one particular part in the in the reply from Saka that that I just want to draw your attention to, which is AM seven. So this is the Saka CEO, uh, Mr. Andrew Bretzka, that's responding to you. Sorry, this is the particular part where, um, so the so it would be from, from the afternoon ayah, so it would be line one, two, three, four. So it would be paragraph four from, from the greeting. Um, Mr. Bretzka says, at the same time, Robbie also approached Saka as he was similarly aggrieved at what had happened and wanted assistance. Mm -hmm. So I just want to hear from you because obviously you were, are both represented by Saka as a trade union. Then how does Saka or how did Saka resolve the complaint? Because they're saying that Robbie also approached Saka and you also approached Saka because you were both aggrieved and, and wanted assistance. Mm -hmm. So here, yeah, I remember I also went to Saka. And I remember they, 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 they said that they cannot fight for the one side and not leave the other side because we are both members of the South African Cricketers Association. Hmm. And I said, this is the story. They said, they don't, let, let, let take it to the CEO. Take it to the CEO, the union, they'll deal with it. And then when it was not dealt in the right way and Saka never got back to me until 2020, until this whole uh, Black Lives Matter movement came out, and, and, and since the last message in 2016, and they apologized. They apologized for not getting back to me and checking up on me, which I felt, as a union, which I felt it was disappointing. It was very disappointing from Saka, from my side, to not even check and see, okay, how did the thing go? There's no support from them as a black player. So, am I correct in saying that there was no inquiry as such? <clears throat> you, you filed your complaint about what had happened around the punching in the face. And um, if I understand your evidence well, you say Saka who convened the disciplinary inquiry. Um, listened only to the person who punched you in the face. They listened to his side of the story, Robi without listening to you or in your absence. So you don't know exactly what happened behind those closed doors because you are not there when they were dealing with your complaint in so far as it referred to Roby. Is that is that how I should understand your your evidence? Oh, Mr Chair, uh, that was the union that uh, the dolphins. Mm. that the way they dealt it, they only, mm. the hearing. With Saka is that they said that me and, and Robbie are both members of the association so mm -hmm. that they cannot take sides. Which, and, and after the whole hearing, they didn't, I feel like if they checked and asked me, how did the hearing go? Were the people in the hearing, they never did that. And they, and, and, and they, they never got back to me until 2020. So the hearing was held by the dolphins? By the dolphins. Okay. And, and what was Saka's role? As, as a union, I'll, I'll feel like they should be, it should be there and say, okay, the, what happened? And, 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 mm -hmm. and, 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 and be there for me also, and be there for, if it's also part of the union, but listen to the, to, 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 to the right thing. Mm -hmm. Was the hearing done the right way? Mm -hmm. Which they did not do. Mm -hmm. So I felt like us as black people, uh, black people, I don't, I, I feel like soccer also as a union, they don't, they don't, they structure in, 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 
in, in, in the union of, of black people is not really there. And I've heard a lot of people complaining here. Uh, in, in, I've been listening to players complaining. They also complain about the same thing. So I feel like they, they I don't know, there needs to be a structure there or if it's a department of transformation where people can go and, 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 cr and cry and say, this is how I'm being handled. Not to say, no, we cannot, we don't know racial, racial uh, we have to balance things, which is unfair on my side. And I remember the one time I was in, uh, I went to uh, our Cape Town and AGM in Cape Town, a second AGM, after the whole Black Lives Matter uh, was happening. So in the AGM, I asked, uh, they were talking, then there were a lot of, of points that they were talking about, and then they came to the whole Black Lives Matter. And, and they said that they apologize of not focusing in, in black cricketers that they've seen that they're going to try to work on it. And then I raised my hand, I think Andrew Bretsky was speaking there. Then I raised my hand, I asked, I asked Andrew Bretsky, okay, Andrew, what have you done? Now you, you, you seen that you, you guys were not really focused on this. What have you guys done? They said they went to, to, they went to, they went to some uh, summer seminars that they went to, 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 to change and understand. And which is not enough on my side. You can't just go to a seminar and then think things will change. Mm -hmm. I think there should be structures that are going to be there because there's going to be another I, 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 me that's going to go there and be ultrated. And then this whole thing is going to go all around, all, 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 all around, and then the thing just dies down if the media or something like that just stops it. So we're thankful for this kind of stuff that my story can be told again, like the SJN, SJN and still be people listening and, and seeing the wrongs. Why do you think this assault on you was racially motivated? Because, Mr. Mr. Chair, I think the things that he said to me, mm. the things that he said to me, the things that he was saying to other guys, so, and also, 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 he said, like, he said a lot of things, and he was, and, and that's when I told him that you're so confident and you're so easy to talk about quota systems, you're so easy to talk about this, like, guys that wrote letters about Bill Mafal, that it, they just, only thing that you guys know is to just to write letters. You guys. So, to me, I think it didn't, it, even, even the way he used us as a captain, as black players, which I did not agree with. Can you go back to that email that Advocate Mali took you to, which is AM7? The, uh, the, the third bullet point there. Can you see that? The third one. He says, this is Saka writing to you. There were subsequent communications between Tony and Pete. And Pete, you said, was the former CEO. So, yeah. Tony, I would imagine, was the, is the Tony Irish, who was the former CEO, I would assume, of Saka. And as you know, the disciplinary action was initiated against Robbie. Right? He pleaded guilty to the charges. And a son, do you know what were the charges against Robin? They told me after when I, I, I inquired about them. Okay. When you went to a hearing, you didn't know what were the I charges? I don't know. It's, it's, uh, Pete Devet says that it's between the union and Robbie, the charges. That's what mm. they said to me. Mm. And then after later on, I inquired and suffered that. Then they, they wrote this. And also with this, I don't really, I don't think it's true, because uh, uh, the CEO of Dolphins wrote an email showing that the, the 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 charges that they gave him, the charges that they gave him, and I've got email on it. The charges that they gave them, they, they're not the same from from Saka and from the Dolphins. Okay. So he says he pleaded guilty to the charges, and the sanction was imposed. Brackets. I would assume that's what the sanction was. 20,000 rents, meaning that he would have been, you would have been asked to pay 20,000 rents, community hours, and formally apologized, apologizes to you. So do you know anything about the 20,000 rent 
that Ruby had to pay. No, I only knew it when, the, when I saw this, mm. this email. Community hours, do you know if he, what that means, community hours? I prefer to talk about community service, which I don't know of. Mm. And formally apologizes to you. He, he, he apologized which I didn't, that in the mm. hearing, which mm. I did not mm. agree with. And then later on, when I had to go drop the, the, the police charges, he came apologize. Yes. Apologized. So were you told at the time when you were asked, when he was asked to apologize to you, were you told anything about 20,000 community hours on that day? Nothing, nothing, sir. And then they say there was no disciplinary action against you. What do you understand that to me? I don't, I don't understand what were they going to charge me of. Mm. It was not disciplinary action against me, mm. which I do not understand. And then on the next page, the paragraph that starts with from, He says, from a soccer perspective, any allegation of racism is taken seriously. Hence, Tony making contact at CEO level. We were pleased that a process was initiated to resolve the matter. In hindsight, I regret that Saka did not engage with you more subsequent to the finalization of the hearing to ensure that you were 100% satisfied with the outcome. For that, I apologize. So the allegation of racism in that paragraph, was it part of the charges against Robbie? Yes, sir. So then it answers the question that the chairperson asked you about how do you know that the, how do you explain the, the, the assault that it was racism? So Robbie was charged with that allegation of racism. They said they, oh sorry sir, they, they, they tried to, to, to run away of the fact that it was racism. Mm -hmm. So they said, no, it was just people, two people fighting, oh. which I said, no, because there was stuff that we said from three days before that stuff, when I raised my hand in, the, in that fan, I said, the stuff that you speak about, which I don't agree with, mm. and I stood up. Mm. So did you make allegation of racism? Yes, I did. Okay. Of course, it would have been allegation of racism and assault. Mm. Do you agree with what the, what Saka is saying that um, from a Saka perspective, any allegation any allegation of racism is taken seriously? They didn't take mine seriously mm. when I said it was racism. What would you have expected them to do? What would what would, would have, have made you at least assured that they are taking this matter seriously? So what I would have, I think, after the hearings, when I, when I send an email and say, and say this thing was not dealt in the right way, mm. they should have checked and say, how can a hearing, because there is a thing of CSA, how they, they conduct the, the hearings, which I believe that also dolphins should also, mm. they fall under the umbrella. The code of conduct. The code of conduct. Mm. And I've got it here. Mm. On the uh, unfair disciplinary hearing process. Is it part of the text of your affidavit or is it mm -hmm. in the annex? Okay.
it's on uh, there's paragraph 15 that makes reference to to the rules of, of the code of conduct paragraph 15. M6, you also make reference to this code of coordinates. M6, oh yes. Is there. You're saying there, you're writing to Hendrik, you say, I, however, would like to distance myself from the proposed letter and do not agree to its content. At no point have I ever indicated that I was happy with the outcome of the proceeding. As a matter of fact, I wasn't, and I had followed up with Saka and CSA immediately after being made aware that Rob's suspension only lasted a week. My problem on the matter has always been that no formal disciplinary process was convened, or at least I never participated in one. By disciplinary process, I'm referring to a process that meets the requirement of Section 4 of the CSA Rules and Code of Conduct. I refer to the CSA Code as a point of reference in the absence of the KZN Cricket Union being publicly available. However, I'm sure that the two codes should be similar in principle and that no union should be in a position to deviate significantly from the principles of the mother body. And, and it says, yeah, how CSA, the, it, the panel and stuff like that, that how many people there, yeah. which never happened there. Yeah. So the question was, what else that Saka should have done? You say they should have followed up whether indeed the process was followed. interested in uh, in paragraph 20 and 21 of your of your affidavit. Firstly, I would just like to get your own understanding of what this Black Lives Matter movement was, how it became an issue with, uh, within Cricket South Africa, and, and how it became a movement with which it appears black cricketers identified with, or some black cricketers identified with and uh, in a manner in which it was not receiving the full support of all cricketers, black and white. So can you just let me have a, a feel of, of what it was that you understood about, about the origins of this movement uh, or how it was relevant or was found to be relevant by black members of the 
of South, of Korea and South Africa. Thanks, Chair. So my understanding of Black Lives Matter movement, I know from where it started, it was an American thing with the George Floyd. Yeah. And then it moved all over the country and where black people were speaking about the unfair treatment mm. that they received. Mm. And then it came about in, 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 in South Africa, it was Lungingiti who, who, who wrote something on Twitter and he was attacked by 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 uh, uh, white white uh, white people that said that that said that mentioned lots of stuff to him and then they talk about farmers lives matter and stuff like that. Yeah. Where I think that's where it lit it lit it lit the fire. There. And and people came came in and that time it was remember it was level level it was locked down there was not much happening so yeah. everyone jumped into the whole thing and they stood up and said yeah black lives matter and even uh, journalists got involved in it and to me it came to me I got a message from a journalist and said ah yeah I remember also you were ill-treated and my Kayantini also spoke and a lot of guys spoke I said yeah I felt like I, w I was ill-treated my story still stands even now mm. I'll never change my story and he asked me about my story and I told him this is how, fair, how unfair I was treated Mm. from what happened to the hearings <coughs> and I said yeah Black Lives Matter because mm. cause that time my story if, 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 if the whole Black Lives Matter movement never happened I think my story would be forgotten by now mm. nothing was going to be taken seriously it would just be oh yeah that guy was what, the only and if, that guy was that's what happened to him and it all died I think it kind of woke up it, it woke wounds to, from 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 ex players to current players, and and yeah, about unfair unfair treatment. And and people went there and told their story, of unfair treatment, and and to to in in a country where we're a democratic country where we, everything's supposed to be leveled. Now. Where are you now with cricket? Well, I'm, I'm still playing, uh, Mr. Chair. I'm at the Lions. So I'm playing my cricket. I'm also doing some coaching at schools. And, mm -hmm. and I do, there's quite a few things that I do in cricket, mm -hmm. particularly at schools and the club. And I'm still in the setup of the Lions. And. Uh, what is the arrangement like there? I mean, who is in leadership? Is, and is there representativity in the management of the lines in so far as your concept? Is there room for improvement or things are right as they are? Or uh, you'd rather not say? Um, okay, Mr. Chair, uh, when I moved to the Lions, uh, the coach was Godfrey Toyana. And, and uh, when, he, when I moved from Durban to there, I felt welcome. That's uh, so why I'm, I'm still in this, in this, in this setup. It's my fifth, fifth year at the Lions. Mm -hmm. So that means I'm feeling very comfortable with the, with the setup. Even the, the, and it's not about black or, or, or if there's a black coach or a white coach. So it's not about that. It's about just that there is, there is you, your voice can be heard. You can stand up for something, and you you can get respected. And and I remember the one time we were we, we were we were chilling with other teammates of mine from the Lions, and they were saying that's the only place we can discuss of stuff that's happening in the country with white, mm -hmm. with colored, with Indians. And we would sit down and talk of what's happening in the country, and mm -hmm. and the, we, I can hear from both perspectives, his view and my view and mm. take it and we move on. So I think the setup there is, it's, it's, it's a very democratic setup at the, at, the, at the Lions. That's very good news to hear, you know, uh, uh, that there are places mm. which want to be part of the new South Africa, mm. uh, where people are, uh, uh, are dealt with as who they are, rather than what the racial group they belong to. Let me just ask you, uh, as a matter of interest, do you have any females uh, in, 
in, in, in, in, in, in your zip alone. Yes, yes, Mr. Chair, there is a, a, a female side. Uh, the female side, the, the, it used to be the striker CGL side, the, the women's side, mm. that represent uh, Gauteng. Mm. So there is a one, and then they, that, uh, and then they, they do, they're doing very well also. Mm. Well, I don't know. I, is there anything that you you would like to to ask from us, or rather than ask from us, is there anything that you would like to recommend um, as something ideal that cricket South Africa should be? if, in your view, it is not what it should be. Anything at all. Now that you have a platform and say, hey, look, if, if, I, if I had my way, these are the kinds of things that I would really like to see in Cricket South Africa, so that Cricket South Africa should be, you know, representative of all of us, etc., etc. Anything at all that you think of. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, Mr. Chair, there is something that, and and a few people spoke about it. I've been listening to the, to the SGN uh, 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 hearings, yes. and quite a few people raised it. Uh, from Mr. Dumile Mateza to uh, Dr. Eugenia Kula, to to a few people that I, I listened to. So they spoke about, like, I feel like they should be, like, for example, my case, my case, I cannot send it, go to the Dolphins and say, how are you going to sort this out? Or go to Saka, and then it's still not sorted out. Yeah. If there was a, a, a body with the, because this thing doesn't only happen to me. There's still a lot of, of young boys and guys that are, they're still there, that are still playing in the system, that some of them are scared, some of them, some of them, as they, they focus on, the, on their careers, they just don't want to mess things up. So I feel like in terms of, they should be like uh, something where, where, where there is transformation, even it's a department, to say from Saka, starting from Saka, where there is, where they should, people when they've got, think, players can go to them and say, when they're not feeling comfortable and they can go speak there freely speak there freely and say, this is what I feel, this is, this is what I think, and this is how I feel I was treated. Then there's someone that you can go speak to, a transformation, something that you can, I don't know what you can name it. And then those, that, that structure, will, like I think uh, to, 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 that reports to, to the CEO and it will li be li liable of the stuff that happened. Someone mentioned it like that at, at, at the hearings. Yeah. So I feel if you can have something like that within 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 the system and understand each other, because there are a lot of people that are scared to speak, mm. there are a lot of guys that are scared to speak that still have and and that kills the team environment. Mm. It kills the team environment because people are just gonna be quiet, and then the team does just balls and balls and balls and balls and then this it becomes a mess. No. A definition of an ombudsman, uh, of course, ombudsman means also ombudswoman, is a person who listens to complaints and then thereafter deals with remedial action, whether by way of mediation and all of that. Now, I'm asking this in, in light of what you are saying. Do you think if there was a permanent office of the kind of office that this one is, the office of the transformation ombudsperson, do you think it would probably meet your, your remarks which you have just made? Where players, you know, managers, or everybody else would know there is an independent structure where if one had a problem, 
which one felt was not being dealt with uh, satisfactorily. Like, for instance, your problem. Then they at least would be within the structure of cricket, an independent office, office of the ombuds, uh, where people could then take their issues, even against cricket South Africa, so that uh, mm. we have a mechanism to deal with issues like this in such a way that one is not going to feel, ah, my matter was just swept under the carpet. Like, I sense this is how you feel about how your matter was dealt with. What are your thoughts about, about that? Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Chair, you, I think you, you said it. I think there should be a, a, a permanent structure within, within, within Cricket South Africa that deals with stuff like, like, like this. Mm. Even in, you take it to, 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 to even performance, like in terms of in the, in, in the game with management, mm. all over, that deals with all these things. Because it, 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 there's a lot of people that came and are speaking, there's still a lot of people coming to speak. That means there is a, there is a, a problem. Mm. So the problem has to be fixed, and it, it's not, it, and it won't just be fixed by just doing a, a, a temporary thing. Mm. It's something that has to be there and that's going to be permanent mm. and be able to deal with all these these these, these issues mm. to to make the, to make the sports better and live in a better country for all mm. now one of the one of the areas that you have not talked about but I'm not inviting you to do so <laughs> is the disparity in, in emoluments, in, in other words, in, in salaries. Mm. Uh, a number of people have come here and gave shocking evidence, subject, of course, to what the others are going to say, CSA and others. There have been people who have said they either sense or they came to know that for the same job that they were doing as black cricketers, white cricketers or they are white counterparts were being paid 10 times more, more or less 10 times more than they were getting. What is your own experience about, about your own remuneration or have you never checked? Uh, in terms of me, like I have not really focused, I'm not, but it's, 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 it, it, it is a problem to other people, it, it is a problem. Because people are not going to just complain about that, mm. and, and 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 it's something that, like the structure that we're talking about, something that also checks all of that mm. and sees everything must be transparent. Exactly. And see, okay, this and this, this one is on this, this one is on this for me to make grounds level. Mm. So and and people have been complaining, and I've heard stories also mm. outside, mm. which I know of, but I don't want to join in that. Mm. It's none of my, but. It's, it's something that, that people have been talking about and something that also has to be fixed. Mm. Mm. Something that has to be fixed. Mm. Because it's a fair thing to do. I mean, if people are performing in the same category, if you are bowlers and, mm. you know, and uh, if you are batsmen uh, and mm. you are all on good performance, uh, Yes, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Chair, I feel like, uh, like in terms of this, so sometimes uh, uh, black players, sometimes when you get picked for these big teams, you don't want to, you don't, want, you don't want to talk a lot. Mm. You just want to play your cricket and keep quiet. You, you don't want to say, okay, I'm giving you this contract, then I'm gonna get there and say, no, I want more. Mm. That 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 to black guys, it, it's it's difficult. And 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 for example, I know I know players that 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 have that come from disadvantaged families. They're the breadwinners breadwinners for their family, mm. and they know if they lose their contract, they have to go back to the township or go back to the rural area. Mm. So it's 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 something that guys are, we're scared of. Mm. To to do to to say it and to deal with you know okay they're gonna say okay this one talks too much, let's just. That happens to other people. 
So it's like this, this office, like this office that you speak about, that handles all those kind of stuff. Mm. And people that know the game, that have played the game, and they, they, they can see, they know the quality of the player and what mm. it deserves. Mm. Yeah, well, that helps because I, I just wanted to get your own views. It, it seems to me that uh, the number of, now of course, subject to what the others will say if they come, but the number of people who have come before this forum and have complained about how, you know, um, there seems to be no platform other than the usual suspects where they can go and know that their matters are going to be dealt with mm. um, is something that we have heard and, and that is why I was asking whether in fact um, if there was an office of an ombudsperson that was independent uh, but that was recognized by Cricket South Africa for its value, uh, where people would go and, 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 and make their complaints and it would have the authority to implement its own recommendations or to make sure that its recommendations are implemented. That is why the question was asked. Um, I just want to check if there is. So, have you decided to make cricket your career, or is it just something that you are doing on your on your leisure time? No, it's still, uh, Mr. Chair, I think the reason that I'm still playing. I'm still in the structure. I think I still have goals of of of, of wanting to represent my country. Mm. If 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 I would lose that, then maybe that's when I would stop. Mm. So I still have goals of of wanting to play for my franchise, wanting to play for for the national teams. Mm. Well, thank you very much. I I have to thank you. I have with you know. Um, Your major issue here was the feeling you had about the injustice of having been assaulted and uh, that assault having been dealt with in the manner in which it was. But uh, I have to thank you for, for coming, even if it is, that was the major issue. Because you have given us insights too as to um, the number of people like you who seem to love this sport. Uh, I've been amazed about the people who came to appear before us and the extent to which cricket is their lives. And we would hope that uh, these hearings, if they do nothing else but to make sure that people who come and, you know, uh, who play cricket in South Africa because of their love for the sport, should never be discouraged from remaining uh, in the sporting code they love simply because they were born a color that is made a symbol of oppression rather than a symbol of liberation. We should not see color, as most of you have testified here. It seems to me that has been the message that people must be afforded the opportunities that they, they are able to get. And uh, like I've been saying to the others, um, we will be able to make all of these uh, observations if you didn't take the trouble to come from wherever you came from, to be here, 
in the public domain, because this is what it is, and speak your frustrations out, but also your hopes. And I would rather it was your hopes of uh, cricketing, a cricket, a sporting boot that is enhancing the, the democracy and the equalities mm -hmm. that our societies aspire to provide. And uh, we are richer for your having attended than it would have been otherwise. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Jenny. These proceedings will adjourn because we have done the business of the day. And uh, my schedule, subject to whatever changes it may have to undergo, shows me that we start at 10 o'clock tomorrow with the mill, Nol Babal on Zunzu. That's correct. 10 o'clock tomorrow. We are just...